We're finally returning to Premier League action this week after the international break as Chelsea take on South England side Bournemouth in an away tie at the Vitality Stadium. But who will play and how do Chelsea win? Let's get to it. Lads, lasses and the rest of the masses, welcome back to the channel. I'm Mono from Mono CFC and welcome to the lead-in. Like always, I'm going to be predicting the lineups that I feel will play and show how I believe each team could set up tactically. So, without further ado, let's firstly look at our opponents for this match. Bournemouth are currently sitting in 16th in the Premier League table, just one point above the relegation zone. They've yet to win a game in the league, earning two points from four, two draws and two defeats. But, to their credit, the two teams they lost to were both a part of the Big Six, who they wouldn't be expected to beat anyway. You also have to consider that, like us, they are having a rather awful time when it comes to injuries slash absentees, with a lot of their players currently unavailable to play. They've brought in a new manager who is a rather exciting appointment in Andoni Iraola, and have brought in a few decent signings too, such as fullbacks Max Ahrens and Milos Kerkes, who are both very important to how this team functions, and others like Justin Kloivert, Luis Sinistera, Tyler Adams and Hamed Junior Traore. Unfortunately for Bournemouth, a lot of their signings aren't available for this one, but they've made some decent moves overall. Looking at the head-to-head, -head, we can see that it's been a mixed bag recently between the two clubs, but surprisingly, Bournemouth were one of the only teams we beat home and away last season, and considering how bad we were, that's something to note. That being said, their squad is now a whole different kettle of fish and has a far better manager behind them, so we'll have to see if they can change that result. How will they plan on trying to achieve that? Let's look at the team. Bournemouth, managed by the aforementioned Andoni Iraola, have used a variation of the 4-2-3-1 in every Premier League match so far, so I'll be sticking to that formation for this game. First up in goal, I'm going to be putting in club captain Neto. As their captain, I don't expect him to leave the starting eleven anytime soon, so he remains. For the back four, it's going to be unchanged from their last game against Brentford, with the aforementioned Max Ahrens in at right back, Ukrainian Ilya Zabarny in the right centre back spot alongside Marko Sanesi, who admittedly might be replaced by Chris Mepham depending on if he's ready to start after travelling from the international break. Finally, over on the left will be another player I've already mentioned, Milos Kerkes. Moving into the midfield, let's start with the two deep midfielders, and I say that very deliberately because of how Iraola likes to set up his teams. Unchanged from the Brentford game, the man on the right of the quote, pivot, will once again be Ryan Christie, who's not usually known for his defensive acumen, but I'll explain this a little more in depth later. Next to him is a toss-up really, Iraola has swapped between using Lewis Cook and Joe Rothwell in this role. Personally, I prefer Lewis Cook, so I'll be putting him in there. I'm sure they'd love to play Tyler Adams here, but unfortunately he's suffering from a thigh injury and most likely won't feature for the Cherries. Moving further up into the attacking midfield slash winger areas, I'm going to be changing this ever so slightly. With the form that he's currently in, I can't see David Brooks being dropped, so he retains his place on the right-hand side. This means that Antoine Semenyo would have to drop out of the side, but once again I'd expect him to play against us considering his decent form, so I'm going to be putting him over on the opposite side in place of Justin Kluivert. There's definitely a chance that this position is filled by Marcus Tavernier, and I wouldn't be surprised if it is, but I feel like these two are Bournemouth's most informed wingers at the moment, and I personally wouldn't drop either of them. In the centre is going to be Philip Billing, or just Philip as he now seems to want to be called, who will no doubt be a danger man to watch out for. And speaking of those, finishing off the team is ex blue striker Dominic Solanke, who's already got two goals so far this campaign. In terms of how the Cherries will play, it's all going to depend on whether they can get sustained periods of possession or not. For the most part, Iraola led sides are very opportunistic, but aim to capitalise on the possession when they get it. There's a large focus from them on wing play, with the fullbacks overlapping to provide the width, which is vital to how this team plays. Both wingers like to cut inside to provide that opportunity for the wide defenders, so we'll have to be wary of shots from outside the box from both Semenyo and especially Brooks. The central areas are interesting, as stated before, and this is because of one of the deeper midfielders is often tasked with bombarding up the pitch in order to get in and around the area, which in this case is very obviously the task of Ryan Christie, who's predominantly an attacking midfielder, usually. 
But let's be perfectly honest, Bournemouth aren't getting much of the ball here. They are playing a Chelsea side that has the highest average possession in the league, and they aren't particularly a side that likes to aggressively press. As I said before, they are opportunistic. They like to be defensive and sit in two blocks of four, with both wingers dropping very deep to supplement the defence, leaving Billing and Solanke up top for transitions. And these two up top will try to press the centre-backs, but not particularly wholeheartedly. Bournemouth are 100% a danger from long passes from the back after sustained periods without the ball. Usually started from the goalkeeper, they love to play the ball into the channels, and don't particularly opt to use the central areas as mentioned before. Solanke is always a willing runner, and often finds himself in wider areas as Billing and Christie push into the box on the break. This is what worries me about this game. We struggle to break down stubborn defences and haven't been the greatest at defending counter-attacks either. Bournemouth are almost the perfect team tactically to beat us if we aren't 100% sharp. One thing to note is that they do look pretty suspect defensively in two specific scenarios. Firstly, when they lose the ball during one of these counter-attacks, when they've committed men forward and don't have that security blanket of the two blocks of four, they look incredibly open and vulnerable to counter-counters. The other is when the ball is being played around the edge of the box at speed. This is hard to defend for any team, but from what I've watched, Bournemouth have particularly struggled to keep up with the speed of teams that play quickly, like they did against Liverpool and Spurs. Perhaps if we can utilise these things, we can get some success against the South Coast team. Now from the cherries to the blues, let's talk about Chelsea. But real quick, if you're enjoying the content and want to see more, please consider subscribing to the channel. Cheers. Let's start with the formation. Do I think we are going to change the system? Absolutely not. 4-2-3-1 once again. Do I think Poch will have a different approach? Uh, slightly. So, first up in goal, I'm going to be putting in Robert Sanchez. He's vital to us playing out from the back, and as our number one, I don't see him getting dropped. Though admittedly, I would like the opportunity to see Petrovic play, I just don't expect it to happen. For the back four, I don't see it changing at all if I'm being honest. Malo Gusto comes back into right back for Chelsea as James is still injured. Axel Di Sassi stays at right centre back, as does Thiago Silva at left centre back. Though Badi Ashiel is back in training, it's far too early to rush him into the starting 11, so Thiago stays here in left centre back. At left back, I'm going to be sticking with Levi Colwill, though I'm not sure if Poch will opt to do this any longer. I'm sticking to my guns and expecting him to keep Levi here, unfortunately. In the midfield, I'm going to change things ever so slightly. Moises Caicedo might not be ready in time after travelling from international duty, so I'm going to be replacing him with Conor Gallagher in this deep role. Next to him is going to be Enzo Fernandes, who according to Pochettino is definitely ready to start, and as he's so important and not injury prone, I expect him to do just that. The third midfielder, who will operate as a 10 but also as a right side of 8 at times, is going to be the impressive Colt Palmer. I think most of us were happy with what we saw late on from the young Englishman against Forrest, and alongside some very decent looking footage of him from training recently, I genuinely believe he retains his place. For the three attacking players, I'm going to be going for Raheem Sterling on the right. I think he's still currently our most informed winger, and despite my love for Noni Madueke, I don't see him getting in the team over Raz unless Raz gets shifted over to the left-hand side. Speaking of that left-hand side, this is where a lot of talk has been lately. We've seen Poch address Ben Chilwell playing here in interviews, and I suspect the reason for this is to try and calm down slash persuade a lot of the fan base that it's not a bad idea, and personally I don't exactly think it is a bad idea. Like Poch said in that interview, Ben has been providing a lot of chances in that role. That that being said, I've watched how Mudrick has been performing in the training videos that were put out from the left hand side, and I can't justify putting him on the bench any longer. So I'm kind of going heart over head here, but despite putting Cowell in left back, I'm putting Mudrick in at left wing. I know the more likely scenario is Chilwell playing here again, but I'm trying to manifest the change with this selection. It might be copium, but I also think that Poch might possibly want to stop this idea to quell fan unrest before we get a riot outside Stamford Bridge. And finally, up top is going to be Nico Jackson. Armando Broja isn't ready to play despite what the Albanian FA president Armando Duca says, which leaves Jackson as the man up top. Again, I would like to see Poch give David Washington some minutes in this one at some point too. 
I think a lot of people have unjustly turned on Jackson because of one miss against Forest, which I will state again is a much harder chance to score than everyone is claiming it to be. If you've ever played football in your life, you'd know that when you're being closed down and are stretching to toe poke a ball, especially when it's off the floor, it is incredibly difficult to guide the ball where you want it to go. People are acting like this should be a tap in, which it definitely isn't. One miss isn't a reason to suddenly do a 180 against one of our best performing players throughout all of our games so far anyway. As for how we will play, I think this game will play out very similar to our last few matches, but before I talk on that, it's time for the question of the day. As always, I'm going to highlight some of the comments from the last video, so here are a few responses to the last question of the day. Thanks guys for your continued support, as ever. If you want your comment to be featured in the next video, leave your answer to this video's question of the day down below with QOTD at the start. So for this week's question of the day, we'll go for a rather simple one this week. Give me your score prediction for this game down below. Alright, so how will we play? Well, I almost guarantee this game will play out almost identically to the Forest game, Chelsea struggling to break down a stubborn defence with this hybrid between a 4-2-3-1 and a 3-4-3. I've done a quick breakdown on why the system hasn't been working and what we could do to fix it, so if you haven't seen that yet, there'll be a link in the top right corner right now, and one in the description for those of you watching on mobile devices. I don't want to constantly repeat myself from previous videos, so I'll try and keep this short and sweet in terms of our tactics. First things first, I think we should try and let Bournemouth have the ball more than we We'd usually do. I know we are a possession based side but because we move the ball so slowly Bournemouth will be able to defend against this all match long and will hardly be troubled. Instead we could opt to forfeit the ball in exchange for opportunities on the counter. Our team has a lot of pace and one of the best hold up play strikers in the league, one of if not the best progressive passer in the league in our midfield and enough defenders to not have to worry about conceding if our out ball isn't great. Otherwise we'll have to see a return to our play from pre-season. Quick one-twos, fast passing, direct runs, direct dribbling. We need to speed up the play or we'll see the same results. This is partly why I opted to put in Mudrick over Chilwell in my lineup. We've seen from pre-season that he has a great relationship slash understanding with Nico Jackson and when these two get going they are almost impossible to stop as we saw against Brighton. Bournemouth also like to commit their fullbacks high as I mentioned earlier, so having someone with electric pace like Mudrick and even Sterling on the opposite side is an avenue for success, and at the very least will force them back so they can't create opportunities for Solanke in the centre. Now that we've had the break, I do think Poch will have some minor solutions to our problems. He said in interviews that he wants us to be, quote, naughty and aggressive, which aren't exactly terms I'd personally use to describe a football team, more so a middle-aged woman after a glass and a half of red wine, but I get where he's coming from and I'd suspect he's drilled the players into being more direct, be that through shots from outside the box after one twos like we've seen in training videos, or just being faster in general with our play and our pressing. Either way, Poch absolutely has to get a result here, and more importantly needs to make a statement after that disappointing loss to Nottingham Forest. I reckon this game will be cagey for the most part, but I suspect once our first goal goes in, a small floodgate might open. I see both teams being capable of winning, but I'd suspect that Chelsea will be far more motivated after our poor start. For a score prediction, I think we'll win this game, and I think we will have to score a lot of goals in order to comfortably win, so I'm going to go for 3-1 Chelsea. I just know that we are conceding once again, and I suspect it will keep happening until we get our first choice defence back. I'm going to say that our goals will come from Sterling with a brace and a player of the match performance, and Palmer blasting his first Chelsea goal in from 20 yards. The opposition goal will come from Philip, who always seems to play well against us and will likely score a header in stoppage time or something. But that was just my lead in match preview for Chelsea vs Bournemouth, thank you ever so much for watching. Let me know your thoughts on these possible lineups in the comments section below, and if you'd be so kind, subscribe to the channel and leave the video a like if you enjoyed. Don't forget to tap the notification bell so you never miss a video from me, or check out some of the other videos on the channel on screen right now. I've been Mono from Mono CFC, and remember, in the rain or in the dry, keep that blue flag flying high. Come on you blues.